On this episode, we go Facebook Live hard. We're good? Yeah. We're, good. We're, we're live. Super live. Super live. Not just live. No, super <laughs> live. <laughs> I don't even remember. <laughs> hey, everybody, this is Gary Vay. Yeah, thank you. Hey, everybody, this is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 208 of the Ask Gary V Show. And this is a very, very, very special episode of the Ask Gary V Show as we continue to experience. You know what? We had the golden era. And I think like these last 25, 30 shows, maybe 15 shows have been like the experimental era, right? We've tried a lot of different things. You know, it's, it, we're, we're trying to find our cadence to the next thing. And this is a Facebook Live episode. So what we're doing on this episode, instead of the call-in, we're using the Facebook Live technology. There's all sorts of things going on here. Uh, Stefan's got a got a, a wire hung out. Britt's actually live on, on, on it right now. I just heard myself. I'm weirded out. I have to collect my composure. But to get on this show, right now, everybody watch live on Facebook Live, you can actually ask your question in the comments right to India. India asks, boom, the whole thing works. It's very 2016. <laughs> I'm very excited about it. And also, let's make sure that we share, bear it up. Everybody share right now. If you're watching, share this up. I would love to get some new audiences into the funnel of the Ask Gary B Show. If you care about your friends and family and acquaintances and ex-boyfriends whatsoever, please share it up. And are you feeling ready to have I'm some ready. questions? Already. I'm ready. I have two, but I don't feel like. Well, you know what? We should we should really do this. Like, let's do oh. let's do let's get into the Facebook show. You want let's to get into the Facebook show. Yeah. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's get into the Facebook show. show. By the way, a really <laughs> funny thing, a really funny thing is how many people in Amsterdam. Uh, Asked me to do the show oh, thing. Oh, really? Um, it's become a whole meme when I travel selfies and like, hey, would you mind just doing the show sure. with me? And then I have to like do it with That's them. Cool. You've become a, a, a global icon, in India. Wow, I love that. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? Always. Um, okay, first one from Tony. Tony. Um, what is the most important lesson that you learned from Mike? What is the most important lesson that I've learned from Mike that I very much appreciate people who are consistent? and are willing to grind in the way that I like to roll and it's very important for me to level up everybody that surrounds me because uh, every minute counts, quality counts. For Mike to not miss a single day, including the one time Mike actually got drunk for the second time in his life, literally came in drunk, dead, finished, and just laid in the gym while I worked out. Like laid, like, like, like a baby. Like a, like, a, like a 20 year old like frat guy crushed from the night before, like on the ground. I think that drug at Nate and, and Trouty's house, by the way, which is the funniest part. Um, so uh, that I appreciate the, th you know, that I'm a fan of, I'd love to say that I only talk about what I believe in, that when I see it in somebody else, it's uh, extremely valuable and reinforces the tried and true. Two years, the guy never missed a single day. Like came through every time, didn't miss a single flight, and really did a tremendous job. And so that consistency does matter, and I know I do it, but feeling it on the other hand was very, very uh, rewarding. And uh, I'm gonna miss Mike a lot. Mm -hmm. Over the next several weeks, he'll be around with Jordan transition stuff, but like, it's quite emotional for me. It's emotional. Yeah. And Jordan? Jordan. Not, that, not, not the, the new Jordan. Not the new Jordan. Not the new Jordan. Jordan. Jordan is the name of the new trainer. Yes. Jordan. He's in for three years, so we won't feel the transition quite as quickly. Um, how would you scale a wedding photography business with basically no recurring dollars? Meaning like like he just doesn't have a lot of money. Like yeah, a, yeah, guess, I get, yeah. He doesn't have a business model that's recurring. It's, you know, I get a wedding, I shoot it, I get money in. Everything goes into the bank. So how would you scale? How I, you, you know, I, I, I would, first and foremost, I think Snapchat, so if I'm a wedding photographer, one of the first moves I would do is very similar to the advice that I gave to designers. Immediately, I would layer a tier of Snapchat filter capabilities. I believe every modern wedding, 35 and under, in America, in the next 18 months, is gonna have a Snapchat filter. It's gonna be like a big thing, like Karen and Rick. You know, like that thing. So I would do modern marketing. One, I would go triple in, quadruple in, all in, 
uploading all your photos, five, seven a day, get approval, do your thing on Instagram and learn all 15 hashtags that matter on Instagram, the five most popular ones, the five medium ones, and five long tail ones, like hashtag Hamptons wedding, hashtag, you know, uh, you know, Rockaway weddings, like hashtag, your area that you shoot in, like, uh, uh, there's always that hall, you know, that that like place that everybody gets mad, married at using that name and weddings. Um, so 15 hashtags against five to seven photos every single day on Instagram I think will lead to tremendous business. The other thing I would do is I would try to guest blog on wedding sites about Instagram and Snapchat. Because again, if you're watching my show, you're kind of aware of these things, right? Use modern social creative as your linchpin to your actual business. If you think about being a photographer for weddings as the secondary thing, and you think about being great at Snapchat and Instagram around the wedding industry, using it and then commentating on it, you will create a much bigger awareness funnel. And then people are like, oh, I wanna use that girl, that guy, they're good at Snapchat, Instagram, and wedding photos. It's 2016, 2017, so I would hustle. Like, I would work. Like what I just said took work. Like You like that one, Andy? It's real, it's work three more, four more hours a day to do what I just told you and amazing things happen. You know how many people are like, oh miraculously I made $500 this weekend on eBay because instead of drinking beers on my porch and watching you know, Thunder Warriors, I went through my garage or went garage sailing and I sold stuff. Stefan smiled because he watched all of Thunder's <laughs> work. <laughs> That's why he has $500 less in his pocket. <laughs> But he has the memories and enjoying himself, escapism. Great, game. great, game. <laughs> great games. Um, from Ash. Ash! What is the best advice you can give to someone who wants to start a small business but they're still working full time? To do it after your hours. It was called Crush It. I wrote it in 08, it came out in 09, 7 p.m. to 2 in the morning. This is all the same things. Are you guys willing to put in the work and pay? Guys, are you willing to pay the price for what you want? I want to have a business so I can make lots of money and go on vacation and have lots of things. You want a 1% life, but you're not willing to put in a 1% work ethic. Work your job, come home, and do I have to go through it again? Like, do I, do I have to make fun of Game of Thrones and the Golden State Warriors one more time? I'm more than happy to. You gotta give up all the leisure stuff and you gotta work from seven to two in the morning, start a business, sell shit on eBay. I put that out there, everybody can do that. Um, be- become the wedding photographer of America like I became the wine guy. Not everybody can do that. But you've gotta make the mental switch. In the same way that two years ago I said I'm gonna make the mental, there was no tactic to get into better shape. Like this, month. get in here, but get in here. Uh-oh. The timing was unbelievable. I was Good. just talking about like my health switch. Ironically, you started around the time that I was starting to like smoke around it. Yes, um, sorry. You're, you're an unbelievably athletic kind of dude. Sure. You agree with me that it is a yeah. mental switch, oh, yeah. not a tactic. There's no like, you're gonna do this. It's, it's binary. Either you're mentally in the place of like, I take this seriously, or you're not. Yeah, because well, life does whatever it's gonna do. You just kind of decide what you're gonna do around it. So, and that happens with, uh, with exercise too, I think. So, yeah, just go with it or you don't. One or zero? One or zero. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> but do you remember two years ago when we went to Vayner camp and he climbed the wall in one second? Do you know about this? Yeah. We had like this wall thing and everybody was like legend. really, yeah, yeah, it took him one second. Yeah. He's a machine. Anyway, like what's my, re- what's the person's, Ash? Ash. Ash, what's my recommendation? It's, unless you've been in my cycle for the last 30 or 60 days and I'm new to you, I'm gonna get really pissed off at you. Like, the work. And by the way, you may not be good enough to make $10 million a year with the work, but you might make $4,000, but it's still gonna be the work. Like I can't instill more talent into you. You can do a very good job of trying to find white spaces and figure out what you're good at, but once you put in the work, the the talent, the white spaces, that's a, a coin flip, that's a lot of DNA, that's a lot of luck, that's a lot of skill, there's a lot of things there, but the work is always part of the equation. And that's the part none of you want to do. Let's just, can we just finally have this conversation together? You just don't want to do it. You just don't. You really don't. You say you do, but you don't.
You'd rather lay in bed and sleep in for 15 hours. You'd rather play video games. You'd rather play bullshit games on your phone. You'd rather watch TV. You'd rather watch this show. You'd rather go play beer pong. You'd rather do something else than work. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Which is why I push people to doing work around their passions because it makes it a little bit easier. If I had to do this around bricklaying, I'd suck. Good. Okay. Um, and you know what? No, just kidding. Go ahead. I knew it. No, 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 um, from Rob. Rob. You're a huge sports fan. Yes. Which athlete do you relate to the most or compare yourself to as in you're the blank of digital marketing? I don't really think that way, but I will say that, you know, watching the Kobe documentary on Showtime, definitely I was like, boy, can I really relate with like, I'm so scary. And like, I don't really, like, it's unbelievable. Like, I wonder what Daily V episode is gonna really show how competitive I really am. There hasn't, there's no, I'm not competitive with this audience. I love this audience. I'm trying to give you guys advice. I don't even want you to watch me anymore. Like, think about that. I love this audience. I'm not competitive with people that have anointed me and gifted me with their time and their effort and their, and their attention. I have love for them. You should see the polar opposite of my love because it's dark. Like, it's unbelievable how much I hate my competition with like visceral hate. But then like in real life, I don't. Like I want to kill them in business. I want them to go out of business, but then I want to help them get back on their feet. But don't fucking compete with me. That was scary. No, it wasn't. That was like, I'm telling you right now, that's not even like, like, do you know how weird I am? Do you know that me and I've AJ get into like fights? I've cornhole and that was pretty Do we, do, we've talked about this once or twice, like, when, do you, do you know Agnes? Where is she? She's, she's, she's you know. Right she's right there. Agnes! AK, I need yours, cause yours like, doesn't lag, yeah. <laughs> I need you. <laughs> Just for a second. Hi. Hey, so I'm doing a Ask Gary Vee show. Mm -hmm. Right. And <laughs> really, I needed you because I'm talking about like this dark place I go into when I compete. Oh. Right. <laughs> I'm not seen that. Right. And so there's that one moment, I don't know if you remember, but I do, where you had a breakaway and I, I came from behind you. And, like, and then you just shoved me to the floor like, no mercy. Yes. Yeah, no, I absolutely remember that. <laughs> so I just thought that would be, it would be more powerful to hear it from you. Like, that, was probably, that was probably inappropriate, right? No, that's fair competition. Yeah, happens all the time. Yeah, winner. That's a winner mentality. Thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, this is from yesterday. Because you're a warrior. So, uh, Legit very jump shooter, too. Awesome, thanks. <laughs> I think we can all agree that Agnes is not a six foot five brooding man. Right. She was on a breakaway. There was nothing. Were you there that day, Stefan? I think it was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. I think when so. I just like. Yeah. Yeah. Inappropriate. Nineteen eighty nine to ninety two NBA <laughs> Knicks Pistons. Yeah. Agnes, the girl. Yeah. Yeah, that was inappropriate. But when it's competition, I do not care. This is, by the way, it actually works for me as a positive for VaynerMedia. I always laugh about minority female things like that. This is competition. Whoever I think can, like, like, I don't care what, even Patriot fans are allowed at Vayner, right? So like, I'm, a, I'm very dark when it comes to competition. Uh, so the Kobe stuff of like, you know, even, and I hate Michael Jordan with my heart and soul, but even his like speech where he's just like, it's all about competition, it's, it's the game. I love the game, I don't like anybody who wants to beat me, and I, and I really want to beat their face in. With a brick. And I mean it. And you agree, like in basketball, like I'm, I'm yeah. mad, right? Like I come, like when we play, I'm mad. And that's basketball. You haven't seen me play categories. <laughs> you were angry when I met you playing trivia. Right. The Christmas party. Wait, that was the first time we met, right? Yeah. And that was like, I was weird. Competitive. You, you, you were super competitive. Right, like I was very upset. Yeah, even if you weren't necessarily like contributing, you were very upset. That's right. <laughs> I didn't have any answers to these questions. I was mad at that's them true. for not knowing. Like that's like, you know, I was like, you, sh you should know something too. I do plenty of things around here. We have this trivia party because of me. Why don't you get the answer right to this bullshit movie? I don't watch movies. You fuckers waste time to watch movies. I don't know movies. I don't watch them. Getting fired up.
Well, let's move on. <laughs> yes, I don't care. <laughs> From Karsten? Karsten. Karsten. How would you advertise a little house in southern Spain near the ocean? I rent it, I have a website, I advertise at an agency, and I do Airbnb, but I still need more customers. Thanks, and greets. Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. This is so... Instagram hashtag strategy is unbelievable. Why don't you give away the house to 50 influencers on Instagram that have a million followers, DM them and say, I have this beautiful house here. I would like you to come out. Why don't you reach out to you know, Turkish Air or Delta or Virgin America or something like that and say, I've got this house. I wanna surprise and delight five influencers on Instagram and have them come and stay. And then what you say is all you have to do is have five photos, tag this, use this hashtag. If you ask every airline in the world, 99.9% of them will say no and one will say yes because they just talked about influencer marketing the day before. Now you can go and Instagram message somebody who's got two million fans and is a pretty girl or boy and say you should come and stay at my house in this beautiful place. I will have your flight taken care of. You can stay at my place. In return I want 10 social media pieces of content. Tag this. Game over, winner, over. Then hashtag culture. Figure out which hashtags are being used and put out way more content. More content, more content, more content. Content is the cost of entry for relevance in our society. Thanks. Thank you. Um, you haven't talked much, oh, Kelsang? Kelsang, wow, oh, crazy names today. How, you haven't talked much about mobile first websites. Advice for doing it well and how do you structure them for success? I mean, it, that's UI UX talk, that's A-B testing, that's first recognizing that mobile first websites are the cost of entry in 2016, like if you're not mobile first, you're gonna lose. So when you design, you think mobile, then you think desktop. Number two, you test your add to cart button, you test your sign up for my email service, you test different colors, different positionings, A-B testing. You know, I don't talk about it because there's a ton of people that are far more uh, knowledgeable about the UI and UX of mobile optimization for websites and I bet you they have tons of blogs and videos out there. There's a site called Google and go search stuff and I'm sure you'll find four to seven personalities the way I understand consumer behavior and marketing in a social, digital, mobile landscape. I'm sure there's plenty of gals and guys that know how to do it. Indy, what about your picture and your... Ugh, what do you great. Think? What do you think? That's great, thanks. Can you get here? Uh, How are you feeling about your pick? I mean, it's oh, fine. It I like it. Like hey, let me see. Let me see yours. It's, it's, there we go. Uh, That's good. There, there we, we go. go. Yeah. It's <laughs> a great shirt you're wearing that day. Oh yeah, that was the holiday party day uh, when you played cornhole and scared a lot of people. Like going back to earlier themes. Do you know what was uh, another recall? Were you, you were there for when we did the camp at Lindsay's? Did you see me play volleyball? No. <sighs> Heard about that, though. Yeah, Lauren Brander was scared. <laughs> Sorry, Lauren. All right. Uh, from Sean. Sean. What returns have you seen with influencer marketing? Is it just for massive brands like Samsung, or can a startup turn revenue from influencer marketing? A startup can turn revenue from influencer marketing. Influencer marketing is reach and awareness, and it works. It's a boring question. I'm trying to... Everything that works, works for everybody. It just not... It's just possible that you haven't figured out your version of making it work. Like, like television. Super Bowl's more expensive than late night remnant inventory. But you can get it. Like, you know, everything, influencer marketing works. It's so underpriced. All right. Search hashtags around your business. Find people that are influencers. You know, if you're in a niche business, somebody who has a thousand followers may be the biggest influencer because you're not you know, in weight loss or in beer, but you're in SaaS business API stuff, but some nerd's got a thousand people, and like, the nerd probably costs nothing, and buy him or her out. Buy him out, Andy. Buy him out. Someone just said Gary is bae, which I like. <laughs> <laughs> and Jake said, what are the best ways to vanquish my enemies, which I also like. I, you know, by, by, actually I have a great answer to this question. Great. Because this is really what I do which is ironic based on what we just talked about with comp competition, back to me being such an insane contradiction. This is gonna blow your mind. By not giving them the time of day. It is insane how much I don't understand about my competitors. I don't even know their names. That's how much disrespect I have for them. I'm being dead serious. 
I never spent a minute. I knew what the other wine stores were doing. I know the names of the other agencies that are in our space. I don't have a damn clue. There hasn't been a minute on my calendar in the last 36 months that was based on getting recon or intrigue on what any competitor of mine is doing. Because the very honest truth is, it doesn't matter what they're doing. Because I'm gonna get mine. And if they're good enough, they'll get theirs second, second rate. But I'm gonna get mine. So how do you vanish them? By establishing that they're vanished from the get. What do you want? Just kidding. <laughs> I'm in a very, I'm in a salty beam. I'm getting here. very competitive. You want to ask a poll? You want to, you want a poll? Polls. I want a poll. You want a poll? You want to throw it up there? So I'm going to say something, come up with a poll, and you're going to create it now? Yeah. It needs to be, ha the answers in the comments need to be hashtag whatever the poll questions are. Hashtag, One more time. Yes. So like hashtag, if, you, if you just So like they have to answer in comments, hashtag whatever to my yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, who do you like more? Hashtag India or hashtag DRock? <laughs> <laughs> and the results will like show up live. It's really cool. So it's gonna be amazing. Like, yeah. Can't wait. Rock it out. <laughs> in the comments, hashtag India or hashtag D Rock. Yep. In yeah. the comments, hashtag India or hashtag D Rock. It is D -Rock. It's, and don't just because India's here yeah. and D Rock's not, don't like pick India. Like if you like D Rock more. Yeah, I mean he's a nice guy, you know. Or like number three, hashtag Share Bear. Oh, oh. Share Bear's gonna win. He's oh, so Share Bear's gonna so take cute. it. I, I think we need to produce Share Bear plush toys. That's like a yay Andrew. He's so good. His illustrations are so adorable. Today's his birthday. Oh, it's his birthday. Yeah. Today's his birthday? Don't Andrew. yesterday was his birthday. Okay. All right, Andrew. Um, I just think that's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> One more? One more. Let's, let's do it. Let's wrap up the show. Right. I like this. I like this. Do they like it? What are they, what are they saying in the comments? What, what's happening? The people in the like, lower no. thirds are cool because the questions are popping up at the bottom. Right, of the but like, what's the feedback? D-Rock's getting a lot. Well, D-Rock has Daily V. Like, as Daily V's become a little bit more, like, you know, if we asked this question, you know, in the beginning. four months ago, India would have crushed him, but now it's D-Rock. It's gonna be rough. But it soon it's gonna be Stefan, because everybody gives D-Rock love, and then I jump in, I'm like, that's Stefan. Great edit, <laughs> D-Rock, nope, <laughs> Stefan. I know. Are you, you're editing right now 40, right? Yeah. How's it coming along? Yeah. Well, I haven't started yet, I just got the stuff. <laughs> um, how long until the older generation gets Snapchat? They said they would never get on Facebook, and we saw how that turned out. Ha ha, from Michael. Ha ha, Michael, soon. <laughs> That's Give me another one. That. Another one? I'm trying to do a lightning round here, um, India. You should what's have, like, the number up on one way of getting over the fear of starting due to potential haters? And also, what's your tip on handling haters? Love your haters. And number two, getting over the fear is something you got to wrap your head around. Like... Like it's just the cost of entry. Like you will never do anything great if you're scared. I've worked in the building supply industry for 10 years. and that time I've made many business connections and I know many small business owners in my area. Can you sign something? I have $500, a computer, internet, car, and a smartphone. What's the best way to start a referral and lead generating business? To get more than 500 bucks, go to eBay and get 5,000 bucks and then start. Hustle to your, if you have 500 bucks, you need more. I mean, you don't need more, but like, I'm very, very, very big on, on understanding that some, like lead referral, you're gonna have to run ads, you're gonna have to create landing pages, like that's, that's not what you do with 500 bucks. Nice. Like you put, you, you, you build up 5,000 bucks and I think there's $4,500 worth of junk in your, in your basement and your garage or your auntie's garage, get that shit, flip it, make that cash. India? One more? Put on the share bear. Oh, share bear? Oh, where is it? Put him on my shoulder. This is so funny. Oh, share bear. Yeah. Oh, where, where, hold on. Okay, got it. Oh, share bear. Oh, I love you, share bear. It's really cute. Oh, I love you, share bear. Share bear's my friend. Yeah. <laughs> you like that? That was fun. Guys, I love you. Thank you so much for supporting all my content. It's been amazing 60, 60 days. The shorts on, on Facebook, two, two of them getting 20 million organic reach, Andy. You know, multiple million reach. Uh, thank you so much. Keep sharing the content. It means the world to me. It's the, it's the greatest gift that you give me. Episode 208, success. I think, you know, for the first time to do this, I think we've got something here. Uh, we'll come back to this. Thank you, India. Yeah, thank you. Uh, question of the day, which you can leave in these comments too as this wraps up. Um, uh, question of the day, um, the whole live experience, Periscope, Facebook Live, uh, what's your early takes on it? Uh, 
What do you like? What do you don't like? Are you watching anything? Give me your two sentence thesis on the live revolution that is happening right now on the web. You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them. What's up guys, hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, Please, do I get to link it up anywhere? Is it like in here? Or is it down below? Is it in print or is it in my video? No, it'll be down left. It'll be down to your left. It's here, down to my left? Like right here there's a button? For them to subscribe to my YouTube video? It's a little bug, yeah. Yeah, it's a little buggy thing? That's right guys, click this. That's right, use that. (laughs)